Well, hey there, tubers, tubettes, various crazy people. Welcome back to the little channel. Um, title of this video is going to be something to the effect of finding purpose in retirement, specifically here in the Philippines. Um, it's an interesting topic, and it was inspired by an email that I received from a gentleman over a month ago. And the gist of the email was, hey, Paul, I've been watching you for a long time. I'm in the same condition as you are. In other words, he's divorced, his kids are raised, he's going to receive a Social Security check, he's got a few bucks saved as a savings account, um, and so apparently him and I are very much lined up financially, and as far as work goes, he's tired of showing up, he has no desire to go back into the grind, and again, he's been single for some time. Um, he didn't mention anything about a romantic life whatsoever, <clears throat> but his gist of his, of his concern was, he says, I'm actually very concerned about not knowing what to do with myself once I get there. Um, how do I fill my day? What do I do? And I think it's a very poignant and a very, very intelligent question. And it's one that I think a lot of guys need to ask themselves prior to retiring. Whether you come out here or you stay in your home country, what are you going to do to fill your day? Because let's be honest, our days were filled for us, especially us baby boomers. And we did have to go to work, and we did have to show up, and we did have to pay the bills, and we did have to take care of the kids. and buy the cars and try to keep up with the Joneses and we were in that materialistic sort of phase <laughs> that we were all guilty of or most of us were at least and um, now that comes to a screeching halt and prior to moving out here I actually asked that same question which is why this guy's email resonated with me and the research that I read from what I can remember is that there's phases to retirement. Um, there's the, the first phase is that first day or that first week that you wake up and wow, you don't have to be anywhere. You don't have to do anything. And it's actually kind of confusing and a little discombobulating to people, um, especially a single guy. Um, he's already got the yard under control. How many times you can wash out the garage um, Maybe he doesn't have a lot of hobbies, doesn't play a lot of sports. Um, and without the job, he's just kind of lost. The studies showed that once that got over with, there was this honeymoon period where he's now come to say, well, this isn't so bad. And going out and, and finding that it's, it's kind of fun to just go have lunch when you feel like having lunch come home and take a nap, relax, this, that, the other. But again, his identity has been tied so deeply to work and his self-worth has been tied so deeply to work that he's struggling with those two things. And remember that word identity, if you will, because I'm going to address it in a little while later in the video. Um, Statistically, men have a higher suicide rate after they retire than they do previously. Um, I think it's something to the effect of 40% higher. Um, some of it is due to physical problems that they're now experiencing because they're older. Chronic pain is the biggest one. Uh, and I think number three on the list was depression. And they went into a depression because they would wake up, they would have nothing to do, and all day to do it, and it drove them crazy. When they were at work, some guys were large and in charge. And they got to boss people around or tell people to do this or do that. And they got, you know, a great feeling of, again, identity and self-worth and, and a feeling of importance from that. 
other people were little worker bees that were underneath that guy and they still were busy making sure that they made the boss happy so that was their that was their purpose and if they did good they'd get an attaboy or a trophy or employee of the month or something to that effect and so now you no matter what strata status you were in at work you take that away and you're really just sort of left with yourself, aren't you? And your own devices. I've always said that the guys that retire, that have a, a, a lifelong ambition for something, were the luckiest guys on the planet. There was the guys that want to write the novel or the memoir, or or they want to take up. They, they've been frustrated guitar players, and now they've got the time to really work on that uh, art, etc., etc. I can kill you with examples. But then there's the guys like me <laughs> that really didn't have the desire to write a book or to uh, learn to play the guitar. Uh, I'm not a handyman, uh, so I can't get a project going. It's not like I'm going to buy a boat and refinish it. Some guys do that kind of stuff. And those guys tend to stay fairly happy and content because they're always keeping themselves busy. But for me, when I moved out here, my actual goal, if you will, um, my reason for being here was to never ever have to show up ever again. Um, that is what I felt my purpose was. And uh, I just wanted, uh, the fact of having nothing to do and all day to do it was very appealing to me. And to this very day, it still is. There are, there's not one day that doesn't go by during the month, maybe two, that I just blow the entire day off. Even though the weather's nice, and even though there's stuff to do, places to go, things to see, money's not an object. I just say, you know what, no. And I just stay home. And maybe I just take a cat nap, maybe I jack around on the computer, play a stupid game on my phone. What would be considered a waste of time um, to many, to me, is fulfilling a lifelong dream, is to not have to do anything, to not please anybody. When I came out here, I did my best to leave as much of my baggage, my emotional baggage, at the airport. And I didn't try to reinvent myself. But what happened to me was I had the opportunity to actually discover myself. Remember the word identity? I found that when I was at work, I had to please the boss or appease the customer or assist the employee. And it wasn't really me being me, it was me being the working me. When I got home, since I did not have a, uh, I wasn't on the same page with my wife and I found myself adjusting and losing a little piece of myself to her way of thinking just to keep harmony in the house. I don't know how many guys can relate to that, but it was I was not one of these guys that said, okay, it's my way or the highway. Um, the repercussions were just way too great. Gratefully, after I think nine years of that, of me losing a piece of myself to, of me losing a piece of myself to appease her, to her way of thinking, just again, just to keep everything kind of smooth so we don't have another argument, we don't go through another whole blow up and a whole big thing and the kids get upset and I get upset and nobody wins. Um, I lost part of my identity there. And so, now she's gone, the kids are grown, 
I came out to the Philippines and to sort of give you a technical answer to what your purpose can be is um, there is no shortage of community type of work that can be done out here. There are a lot of people, my friend, that even though you're living on the same little budget as me, even though you're living in, you know, a relatively simple place, there are tons and tons and tons of people, animals, um, that are in desperate need. And it doesn't mean you have to go out and buy everybody a hamburger. It just means that there is a way that there should be no reason that you can't get out and get involved in some sort of helpful, meaningful way. I think it's an, if you don't have a project, if you're not a woodworker, if you don't have um, a car to restore, if you don't have a novel to write, your purpose can be as simple as getting out into the community and without spending a dime, at least try to be an encourager. Maybe you were really good at your job. Maybe you were really good at math. Maybe you were really good at geography or English or whatever. Um, you can mentor people for free. Uh, you can you can go to um, you can go like I have done with my girlfriend. We have gone up to a barangay and we have adopted them. And so every Christmas we try to give everybody a Christmas gift. Um, and then we do other projects that we stay completely quiet about, uh, just because of our presence on YouTube and how it may be construed. So we keep that under the radar, but there's a few guys out there that know me personally, and they know exactly what I'm talking about. Lastly, the word identity is, my friend, if you don't know what your purpose is, I think a great purpose is for you to now take some time and discover who you really are. What kind of man are you? It's happened to me. I have discovered because I'm no longer having to please the customer, I'm no longer having to appease the, the, the boss, I'm no longer having to try to keep the wife satisfied and happy and calm. Um, it's my chance to just be me. And my true personality over the years that I've been here has actually begun to show itself. It's the guy that I always was, but I stuffed him down because of external forces, or at least I felt I should have. And I have found that to be super liberating. I have discovered that I have many, many, many flaws and that's okay I have also discovered that I have many 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 strengths that I never knew that I had um, as far as the strengths go I try to exercise those with due diligence and as far as the flaws go I I kind of revel in the, in the, in the, in the fact that I'm aware of them and now I have an opportunity to work on them and maybe try to, to just not change them overnight, but take the time to see if I can't make an improvement on that shortcoming in my personality, um, my temperament, um, uh, the way that I think about certain things, the way that I speak to people. Um, Every day you can set your goal to be just maybe a little bit nicer, maybe just be a little bit better of a man. Um, I can't tell anybody um, what you should do when you get here because that's an individual choice. But I really, really do think that 
it's something that should be given thought. We spend a lot of time prior to coming out here figuring out the mechanics of coming out here. What can I bring? How do I buy a plane ticket? What about immigration? What about my visa? Uh, how do I transfer money? Um, the list goes on and on. And so we get the mechanics out of the way to get over here. We get the mechanics of getting set up and how to find an apartment and what the budget range should be and what island I should go live at. You do all this research. But once you get here, what's the goal? Um, for a lot of guys, it's to reboot their romantic life and more power to you. When I came over here, that was one of the last things on my mind, but as a side effect, that's exactly what did happen. I now have a nice, meaningful relationship with a lovely young lady. Um, but I think that the biggest, uh, the biggest victory that I can claim is the rediscovery or the actual initial discovery of who I really am. And then I can take those shortcomings and work on them. I can take my strengths and try to use them. And life is short. And so you can, you can choose to, to be afraid or you can choose to go ahead and take the plunge. When I came out here, I gave myself six months. I said, if I don't like it, you know what? I'll just go home and go back to work. Well, almost six months to the day that I was here, I took the plunge and I paid cash for my gay looking little scooter outside. <laughs> I was now committed. And um, my purpose is gonna be completely different from whatever your purpose is. Uh, but I can almost guarantee you that if you allow yourself time to do some self-analysis, be honest with yourself, try to be as truthful as possible with yourself, you too will find, if you don't already have, your purpose. All right, guys, I hope this video finds everyone well, and I will talk to you next time.